South Sudan is on a countdown to ending guinea worm, a disease which causes excruciating pain as a meter-long worm emerges from an affected person. But war and a population constantly on the move threaten to wipe out recent gains. The reason why failure is not an option is because it actually takes the whole effort down to a square one. And uh, it's like climbing up a very steep hill. And just at that point, if you slip, you come down running to the bottom, <laughs> and crashing down to the bottom. That is not what anyone in this program wants to see happening. Cattle are critical to survival here, but the seasonal need to find fresh grazing complicates the work of the program. They move together to cattle camps, and we believe that transmission has been linked to some of those camps. A vigilant volunteer has spotted a herder limping into Mogos from a cattle camp and brought him to the containment center. Lokom Lokai is reluctant to stay here, even though a worm is emerging from his foot. He answers evasively when asked about the rivers and ponds he has crossed on his journey. I'm very worried because this is the first case from a village where we least expect cases to appear. Secondly, the case was not detected before the warm match. Lokom insists he must leave the camp to buy a goat to make a sacrifice. But if he contaminates a water source, he will put others in danger. His family are said to live in a village near where he was found. McCoy needs to talk to them. We are worried because he has not been that cooperative to provide to us information, and we fear that he might contaminate the water source, and that's why we need to nail down the investigation here. That will enable us to make an informed guess of where he probably got infected. Okay. Do they share the same farming area? Sometimes you really need to get information from different people to see the gaps and try to determine what makes sense. <laughs> After hours of discussion, it turns out the women are not from Lacombe's family at all. In fact, they don't even know who he is. So it's back to square one for the team. And then maybe the other thing that I need to know is whether According to him, mm -hmm. did rain start early this year or last year rain starts much earlier? McCoy now has to identify every single pond where people with guinea worm this year may have drunk contaminated water the year before. It seems an impossible task, but technical advisor James Namuyai has been painstakingly recording crucial data over the course of the year. It seems like these villages here somehow have connection with that location where we had the outbreak last year between March and April. The only way to find out is to start walking. So were there other people who had guinea worm last year farming in the same area? So this is the water source that they are using. So at least we know that 
even though the people from the, from various farms are using this stream, the cases in 2012 are only restricted to the people who are farming on this side. Okay, now we'll determine if there are other water sources yeah. that might be used only by those farming from the other side. Every detail in the landscape can be read as a narrative. If water collects in this depression, many other people will use it because it is along a path that people use, right? I'm going to bear. His understanding is uh, these water is strictly used by those who are farming nearby. Mm -hmm. By piecing together local information, McCoy tries to home in on every possible contamination point. We try to engage different people to interact with that uh, young man so that at least we're able to compare the information we are getting from different people. It's very stingy in providing information. And then it leaves you with the feeling that probably you're not getting the whole truth. The first thing that we are doing about it is to make sure that we detect all the cases that will require support from the community. The second thing we do is to make sure that this water source is treated all year. Every 28 days is treated with the abed. A bait makes another break in the cycle of the disease. It's a chemical which kills the water flea hosts of the guinea worm, but leaves the water safe for people and animals to drink. Which were the water sources they were using last year? Yeah. In their simplest situation, these communities can do a lot of things to help themselves if they are given the opportunity to know what needs to be done and how they can do it.